from the South Point studio. <laughs> the perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. Comedy. See the over-under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yeah. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. For real. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> so I look at the clock. I go, ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. Who is there for heroes or the families left behind when a service member or first responder dies or is catastrophically injured in the line of duty? Who helps our country's homeless veterans? And who helps our nation to never forget 9-11? Let me tell you who. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation. The Foundation's Gold Star, Fallen First Responder, Smart Home, and Homeless Veteran programs comprise their In the Line of Duty programs. They're all dedicated to honoring our nation's heroes and their families. The Foundation's Never Forget programs engage people in 9-11 remembrance across America. Over 80 runs, walks, and climbs a year, dozens of golf outings, and the Tunnel to Towers 9-11 Institute is educating kids in kindergarten through 12th grade to help our nation keep its vow to never forget. More than 95 cents of every dollar you donate to Tunnel to Towers goes to its programs. Never forget the sacrifices of our country's greatest heroes. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. That's T the number two, T.org. The following is a Race Day Las Vegas presentation in association with Sirocco Productions Limited on the Race Day Las Vegas Radio Network. Live from the gaming capital of the world, time for Race Day Las Vegas, covering the sport of kings with a Las Vegas perspective. Now to the race desk with your host, Ralph Sirocco. From the backstretch to the turf club, at the race books and on the internet, to all horse players around the world, a good morning. All righty, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the Race Day Las Vegas radio program on this Friday. Yes, it is finally Friday. And we welcome you to the show. We come to you live and direct from the gaming capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, right here at the South Point Studios at South Point Hotel Casino Complex on the Las Vegas Boulevard Strip. We're here. We're live. And if you go to YouTube, you can see us and hear us on the streaming at the uh, South Point Studios Network on YouTube. We uh, ask you to check it out. If you haven't already, I know there's a lot of people that have switched over already, but it's, uh, you get to see our handicappers as well. And, of course, that's at the South Point Studios. You go to YouTube, you hit South Point Studios, and you'll get it, and you click on, and uh, here we are on this uh, Friday morning coming to you live and direct from these studios in Las Vegas. And, of course, uh, we cover the world on our websites and, and all the other platforms that we have. We always want to welcome everybody to our show. That includes the people who are running around town here that may be listening on their car radios because our anchor uh, radio station here in town is Sports Talk 1400 AM and 107.1 FM. So we welcome them. And of course, everybody who uh, goes to our website, racedaylasvegas.com.vegas.world.global and uh, gets the streaming off of that, or maybe your devices, your iPhone, your Android with the KSHP app for listening, and the YouTube app, if you want to see us as well as listen to us on your iPhones or your Androids, just go to your app store and get those. 
And of course, anywhere you get your podcasting, we're all over the place. Anyhow, welcome to the show, however, wherever, whenever you get us, to this uh, Friday edition on this 12th day of April as we march on to the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, it's getting close now, weeks away, right? Tomorrow will be the last race on the Kentucky Derby leaderboard schedule. It's just 20 points, but one horse, if Hades wins that race tomorrow, can bump somebody off the uh, 20 that are currently qualified through the uh, leaderboard points for the Kentucky Derby's precious 20-stall starting gate for the Kentucky Derby, the run for the Roses. So we'll wait for tomorrow, that's for sure. But uh, Keeneland has uh, a couple of really nice uh, stakes races today. We'll get into that in just a moment. As far as the weather at Keeneland, I can tell you that yesterday was a muddy mess. I mean, it was just a mess. But, uh, you know, we'll wait and see how the weather uh, translates today. I know that they, that big storm that was going through that area uh, of the country has now moved to the uh, top northeastern corner of the contiguous 48. It goes from uh, the Great Lakes area right across Ohio and into Pennsylvania and into New York and up into the northeast. It is now clearing up in the southern, southeastern part of the the nation that was uh, a mess there yesterday at Keeneland. And so uh, we're hoping that uh, the weather will be uh, better at Keeneland as well as Oaklawn Park when it it gets going. As far as the rest of the country, uh, right up until the uh, west coast, everything is clear and uh, great. Uh, as far as uh, any action going on on the West Coast, uh, in the uh, Northwest, there's a little bit of uh, a cloud cover coming in and some rain there in the Northwest. But as uh, you know, uh, we're on a uh, sabbatical, so to speak, a, uh, a brief pause in racing at Santa Anita in Southern California. They wrapped up their winter spring meet uh, over the weekend, and now we're going to go through a week or so of uh, downtime in Southern California racing until Santa Anita picks up on the 19th of April with the Hollywood Park meet, the Hollywood Park days that were there. They call it the Hollywood meet at Santa Anita. So we won't have any racing at Santa Anita this weekend. Don't have to worry about if there's a few raindrops there and they cancel racing, that's for sure. So our concentration uh, this week is going to obviously be on uh, Keeneland and uh, the uh, races at Oaklawn and the Northwest. Oaklawn Park, as, a, as by the way, tomorrow, has the only grade one stakes race over the weekend, and that is the Apple Blossom with Adair Manor, who was scheduled to go. Adair Manor was scheduled to go and was entered in the Apple Blossom, but never made the trip. So Adair Manor will not be, will not be running uh, in the uh, Apple Blossom. So it was reported by uh, John Linda. Okay? So we will keep that in mind uh, for this weekend. But as far as uh, today, we got uh, two great stakes races at Keeneland. We got the Maker's Mark that uh, will uh, have the uh, return of, I'm sorry, I am sorry, I take that back. My note was wrong. Adair Manor will be going in the Apple Blossom. De Jour, which was another Baffert entry that was supposed to go today in the Maker's Mark against Master of sea, of the Seas. That horse didn't make the, uh, the trip. So De Jour will not be running today in the uh, Maker's Mark. Adair Manor is still on her way to Oaklawn Park. I stand corrected. The, uh, the horse that didn't make the van was De Jour. I think Baffert might have thought that uh, with all the weather that was going on back there, that uh, the grass course at Keeneland, if they ran that race on the grass today, that it would be probably soft going, and maybe a source uh, du jour doesn't like soft going, so never made the event. So du jour will not be there to be scratched at uh, Keeneland, but uh, Master of the Seas is still set and ready to go in that race. The Limestone, a quick five-and-a-half furlong turf race, also scheduled for the turf at uh, Keeneland today, was oversubscribed. They got uh, 12 in the field and, of course, a couple of also eligibles as well. We'll wait and see how that shakes out because uh, the turf races. The couple of turf races that were scheduled for the turf yesterday in that muddy mess that was at Keeneland came off the turf, obviously, and they were decimated by a lot of late scratches. So we'll wait and see what happens there. All right. Now on to uh, the, the legal board again. Here we go again with the uh, legal blotter. You ready? Uh, trainer George Weaver has had a positive test on his horse Anna's Wish 
who finished third in the March 16th Cicada Stakes in New York. So the horse has been uh, tested as positive. Weaver was, uh, was cited by HISA for this, for the uh, drug violation. But right now, he is not suspended. The horse will not be able to run until they get the second sample, the second split sample of the drug test. And when that happens, and if it uh, concurs that uh, he had a drug violation, well, you know what's going to happen. He'll wind up getting uh, days, et cetera, as well. So we'll wait and see about that. George Weaver sits there and dangling until uh, the uh, waiting for the uh, uh, split sample to come back for that. He has not yet been suspended, but uh, he's uh, skating, as they say, maybe on thin ice with HISA anyhow. A couple of sad reports that we have to give you right now. Two jockeys, both uh, overseas, uh, were killed in racing accidents. Kota Fujioka, Kota Fujioka, a 35-year-old jockey that was running uh, right racing in Japan at the Hessian uh, race course, was involved in a spill on Saturday, and uh, that spill uh, took his life. So uh, he had 803 wins in Japan. Uh, and uh, our thoughts uh, go out to his family, that's for sure. This, is, this was one week after another jockey in Australia had uh, succumbed from a racing accident. One week before that, Stefano Cherchi, uh, a 23-year-old jockey in Australia, was also killed in a racing accident. Just to give you a perspective on uh, this is a, still a very dangerous sport, that's for sure. Keep that in mind when we're criticizing jockeys like this. So our thoughts uh, go out to those two uh, families there. All righty. And Ralph Nix, trainer Ralph Nix, is going to retire. He's retiring with uh, just no suspensions, nothing. He's just going to retire. His uh, last runners are going to be on Sunday. At, uh, he's got three uh, uh, runners going on Sunday, and, that, and then that's going to be it. Uh, Ralph Nix is going to retire after uh, Sunday's entries and his horses as well. So. Another uh, trainer goes ahead and retires. I guess uh, he has seen the uh, terrain as far as the, the outcome and what's going on in racing now and just decided to retire. He said he's going to do some other things in his uh, lifetime and may come back to racing as a, a blood, blood stock agent or something like that. So congratulations to Ralph Nix on his terms and his retirement after Sunday. All righty, we, well, we got a lot to cover. We've got Jonathan Hardoon with us. Rich Eng is going to be with us. So is John Lindo and Jerry J. Of course, Hardoon, Eng, and Lindo are doing sheets for Keeneland, that's for sure. We'll go over the two big stakes races with John after the uh, menu. And, of course, Jerry J. will have Aqueduct. Don't forget about all of the uh, stuff that's happening here uh, for uh, Kentucky Derby Week. We start out with the special 3 p.m. Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby show here at the South Point Studios uh, location only. This will not be simulcast anywhere else. You'll have to go to the South Point Studio on YouTube and get it. That'll be 3 o'clock on Thursday, uh, May 2nd. We're going to go over the Oaks card because the Oaks card will be the next day. And, of course, a preview for what we're doing for the Kentucky Derby Seminar. That will happen on Friday after the Kentucky Oaks Day Racing. And racing concludes in Southern California, 6 o'clock in the Grand View uh, Lounge, which is right next door, right adjacent to the uh, race book. Jonathan Ardoon from New York and certainly uh, J John uh, Lindo from Southern California will be doing the annual Kentucky Derby Seminar here in the Grand View Lounge. I'll uh, host the thing and uh, do some air traffic controlling between these two and uh, take a look at some of the other races maybe that will be happening on Derby Day that they like as well. And, of course, recap what happened earlier in that day in the Kentucky Oaks. And then when all is said and done, Come Kentucky Derby Day, and that is, of course, uh, May 4th. The uh, seminar is on May 3rd, the Friday. And on May 4th, Kentucky Derby Day, all systems are go for the big party up in the Grand Vol Ballroom uh, there at, uh, right here at the South Point. Big banquet tables, uh, huge uh, seating availability, big screens, uh, bedding windows, kiosks, uh, food and beverage discounts, and, of course, a hat contest as well celebrating the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby, and that'll happen on Saturday, May 4th, the viewing party upstairs, and, of course, uh, the hat contest as well. That thing will kick off at 2 o'clock, so bring your uh, finest uh, hats with you and try to win some money that way as well in the contest. And it's all free from the time you park your car here until the time you make your first bet. So enjoy yourself with us here, me, Jonathan, John Lindo, etc., at the South Point. 
free of charge on Derby Day. Derby week, actually. It's going to be a great week. All right, time to go to our first break. When we come back, we'll start our usual ranking along on the race day show. We'll get you your racing menu and then uh, converse with uh, Jonathan Ardoon and see what's going on at Keeneland today as well. Don't go away. We will be right back. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. All right, back on Race Day Las Vegas for this Friday show. Got to tell you, folks, we call it as it is on this show. Yesterday, our handicappers did the big goose egg as far as uh, selections were concerned. Nobody had a winner yesterday. However, however, uh, nobody had a winner on their picks on the show. However, as you know, each and every racing day when John Lindo comes on, we tell you about the Lindo report that's available here, only here at the South Point Racebook, free of charge each uh, racing day that they have uh, Lindo, John Lindo has his reports. Now, right now he's doing Keeneland because uh, Santa Anita is not running. And on his Lindo report, as I su- tell you all the time, he has a suggested late pick four, a suggested late pick four. Well, that suggested late pick four that was on his sheet yesterday did win at Keeneland. With the scratches taken out of the suggested late pick four, the total ticket purchase price was $12.00. And the pick four, the late pick four, came back and paid three hundred sixty-two dollars and twenty-six cents. Three hundred sixty-two dollars and twenty-six cents on the suggested late pick four on John Lindo's sheet. So uh, it wasn't a total loss, but as far as the, the handicappers on our show, big goose egg tomorrow. I mean today, uh, we hope that they'll uh, they'll get it. Uh, very few times that we ever have a goose egg for, on our handicappers, but they did yesterday. It was a terrible. Uh, racing uh, surface yesterday at Keeneland. Some horses liked it, and some horses despised it. And that's just the way it looked in racing yesterday. Tell you what, though, uh, Wesley Ward, he's having one hell of a meet. You know he always shows up at the spring meeting, Wesley Ward does, was with got his two-year-olds cranked up and ready to go. They are four and a half furlong races at Keeneland. They're the first of the two-year-old races around the country. And Wesley Ward always has them tightened up and ready to go. So far, during the, the short Keeneland meet that started just, what, a week and a half ago? I, I believe maybe a week ago on, on a Friday. In any case, he's had three winners in the two-year-old races so far. Okay? Yesterday, another easy winner in the mud. Perfect chances was an easy winner for Wesley Ward. Public is in tune to Wesley Ward's uh, pension to win early and with two-year-olds during the spring meet. That horse was bet down to the favor and paid $3.08, but another easy winner for Wesley Board in the two-year-old races at, um, at Keeneland. And uh, Junior Alvarado had a couple of winners yesterday, and uh, that was just about it. Except for the uh, horse in the seventh race, Yono, paid $14 even, this horse did. It was 15 to 1 on the morning line, so it was bet down. But uh, the key was, you talk about a horse that loves the mud, Yono went three, has been three for three on a wet track, his third win yesterday at Keeneland. So that horse loves the mud. As far as the Gulfstream Park was concerned, Edgard Zayas had three wins on the card. Pick six paid over $1,600 at Gulfstream. And at Aqueduct yesterday, nobody had the pick six. So you got five out of six today. They'll have a carryover. The fives paid $216.75. Kendrick Carmouche had a couple of winners, and so did Dylan Davis. Dylan Davis accounted for the early double yesterday at Aqueduct. All right, now time to get to our racing menu for today. Reminding you, as we always do, the first post times we broadcast on this menu each and every day reflect that of the Pacific time zone. So if you're listening somewhere else outside of the Pacific time zone, and a lot of you are, we remind you to always, uh, you know, adjust the post, uh, post times of the Pacific time zone 
to whatever time zone you're in so you don't miss anything like I miss mom and dad. Okay, here we go. Here's the menu. We begin with uh, Tampa Bay Downs. Tampa Bay Downs has nine races. They have a pick six jackpot carryover of $1,632 in their first post time at Tampa Bay today for nine races is 9.20 a.m. Pacific time. Laurel Park is next. Laurel Park has 10 races today, and their first post time is at 9.25, 9.25 at Laurel. Then we have Keeneland. Keeneland's back in action. They say 80% chance of rain today at uh, Keeneland, but I could tell you but from the weather map, that front looks like it moved away from the area, so we'll wait and see. Tricky call as far as the turf races are concerned because, you know, they really do want to run the stakes races on the turf. Now, the stakes races today, the limestone at five and a half furlongs on the turf with three-year-old fillies is scheduled to be the seventh race on the turf, okay? 14 in that race, and uh, it's a wide-open event, too. The morning line favorite is four to one, and that's nice as pie breaking from the rail with Mr. Basija aboard. Then a couple of races later, the ninth race is the grade one Makers Mark Mile at a mile on the turf for four-year-olds and up. As we say, uh, DeJour did not make the plane. He did not ship out, so scratch the seven DeJour in that race. The four to five favorite is Master of the Stars returning to Keeneland. Master of the Stars with William Buick aboard. Your favorite in what now is left as a seven-horse field in the Makers Mark. That's the ninth. Ten races overall today at Keeneland. First post time is at 10 a.m. You got a 10 a.m. post time at Keeneland today. We'll wait and see about those turf races. Gulfstream Park has eight races today. Gulfstream Park's Rainbow Pick 6 jackpot carryover, $78,357. Eight races. First post time is 10-10 today at Gulfstream. Then we have Aqueduct, the big A in New York. Now, remember, we told you that Aqueduct has a carryover in their uh, Pick 6. Uh, that's $23,062. Eight races today at Aqueduct. Uh, they expect the track to be off today at Aqueduct. First post time is at 10 20, 10 20 at the Big A today. That carryover in their uh, pick six. It's a traditional pick six, and it is a $1 base bet. First post time, 10 20. All right, Oaklawn Park is next. They have 10 races. Don't know what the track's going to be like uh, there as well today. There was certainly a lot of rain that went through that area in the last couple of days. First post time at Oak Lawn Park is 10.35 for their 10 race card. Then we have Golden Gate in Northern California, although Santa Anita is taking a week off. Golden Gate is not. They have seven races today at Golden Gate. And uh, their first post time at Golden Gate for a pick six jackpot carryover is uh, $57,465. $57,465 in the Golden Gate pick six jackpot carryover. First post time, one fifteen. And then we'll wrap it up today with Evangeline Downs, nine races at Evangeline. Well, we won't. That'll be the next to last race. Track. Evangeline Downs has nine races today. Their first post time is 3.30. And we will wrap it up finally with Charlestown Races. Charlestown Races uh, has a pick six jackpot carryover of $17,796. They have eight races. Their first post time is at 4 p.m., 4 p.m. Pacific for Charlestown races. Don't want to forget them. No, we don't. All righty. Well, you know, today's the second day of the Masters, so we'll be uh, kind of taking a look at what's going on there. That's for sure. It is, of course, the Super Bowl of golfing. But now we get back to Jonathan Hardoon, who is going to take a look at some of those races today at Keeneland. Jonathan, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. Race five at Keeneland has been moved to the main track. <clears throat> the two stake races remain on the turf. So race five is off the turf. The other two races, the seventh and the ninth, remain on the grass. Okay. Now, uh, the the uh, do they give any condition at all for the uh, what the, the condition of the turf course is going to be? It's got to be uh, off, That's, right? Of course. I mean, it rained for three straight days there. You know, it, it's definitely soft or yielding. It's not firm. That I could guarantee. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think that's why uh, Baffert decided to keep Dejour in the barn in Southern California and not ship him uh, to Keeneland today uh, because he was going to be, um, uh, at least on paper, look like uh, Master of the Seas' uh, main rival from California. Dejour has won a couple of nice stakes races on the grass uh, in Southern California, which is not Bob Baffert's uh, you know, M.O. Bob Baffert hardly ever has grass horses that run well, but this one does, and it's a good thing for Baffert because his wife is part owner of that horse. But in any case... Um, I think that's probably the reason why he stayed in California. 
Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, you know, he ran very well last time out when winning the uh, Kilroe Mile. And uh, you're right. I think he d he avoided going there looking at the weather like you did. And uh, certainly he knew the turf course would be soft. And obviously this horse runs in Southern California where it doesn't rain much. And uh, turf courses are usually a lot firmer than they are in the East Coast. Well, I can say this, that uh, they only had three races scheduled for the turf. Two of them are obvious uh, races that were scheduled a long time ago on their stake schedule. So that's the limestone and the maker's mark. And the other ho uh, race, uh, as you say, the fifth race comes off the turf in that race. Remember, folks, they do uh, have an, what they call an all-turf pick three at uh, Keeneland. The fifth race was the first of those three races. So we'll wait and see if they're going to keep that pick three going or not anyhow and what they'll do as far as uh, whether they make it an all race or not. But in any case, keep that in mind. But the limestone at five and a half furlongs for three-year-old fillies will be the seventh race on the card, a quick five and a half furlong race. Now, there are 14 entered in that race. We'll wait and see about the late scratches in a bit. But uh, that looks like a wide-open affair, Jonathan. You can make a case for about eight horses in there, Ralph. For the interesting horse that I liked uh, was the number five horse, Kodiak Wintergreen, 15-to-1 uh, shot. This filly makes a first start as a three-year-old. As a two-year-old, she ran three times, and she re really ran very well in all three races. But again, you're dealing with lightly raced horses. Who knows who's going to be able to handle the course? And... Uh, it's a wide open. Whatever you do, you should avoid playing the favorites in that race because, believe me, no one is better than anyone else. And uh, you should certainly be looking for somewhat of a price. By the way, as far as the all uh, turf pick three, they're not going to make it an all in the first leg because it came off before betting even started. So, you know, if uh, betting windows closed and it was on the turf and then it came off, obviously it would become an all but not one that comes off before the betting even started. So, okay. So in other words, in other words, that is going to be an almost all turf pick almost three. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. An almost all turf pick three. <laughs> all right. That, that, that's a good way of putting it. That's for sure. And uh, you're right. As long as uh, I just thought that maybe since they uh, prefaced it and made it an all turf pick three, that maybe they would uh, change the rules on that. But that, that, that's uh, that goes to Hoyle. That's the way they, they do the rules uh, in uh, other racetracks at other times when they have multiple races that go over turf races that have been canceled before the betting starts. So uh, that's uh, duly noted on that one. All right. Well, uh, the limestone, I guess maybe when you stop and think of it, since it looks like an all even field, um, I would think that maybe you'd take a look at horses that have some sort of tactical speed so they don't get jammed up in, in traffic and maybe uh, the jockeys who can, that are better versed jockeys in, in, in riding, you know, like the better jockeys would probably be on the better horses. Well, Louis Sayers rides the horse that I like, Kodiak Wintergreen, the number five. So nothing wrong with Louis Sayers. He's as good or better than anyone else. Oh, yeah. You know, again, you're dealing with lightly raced horses and a lot of horses coming off of layoffs, and uh, it's a wide open mishmash mess. <laughs> Well, that mishmash miss, you gave a 15 to one shot on the morning line. So if that mishmash miss does, uh, gets uh, Saez home, we're going to be happy people. That's for sure. 15 to one, probably bet down. That horse that had, uh, that relished the muddy going yesterday was 15 to one on the morning line early in the uh, card. And you knew darn well that if people uh, watched, uh, you know, the, the, uh, and read the past performances that this horse, uh, you know, really moves up on an off track, which it was yesterday. And it was bet down. That horse was bet down. Still paid $14, though. That was a good price. But, but also remember, Ralph, in that race, there were a lot of late scratches. Yeah. Uh, there were a ton of late scratches on the card. I think that field, there were like five or six late scratches. So you really got a good price yeah. if you like that. Yeah, good price. And, uh, you know. I guess in the old days, that horse would have had a nice big mud mark on it. So uh, the X with a with zero. The, uh, the X with the zero, <laughs> right. All right, now we get to the maker's mark, which is a race that's uh, probably a little bit more handicappable, let's say, with the past performances, et cetera. There's, there's, uh, there's no question that uh, Master of the Stars will be the favorite in the race. He's got one hell of a resume, likes Keeneland, and um, you got to think he'll like the uh, the type of going he'll get today at uh, at Keeneland on the grass. 
that's what he's used to running. You know, he's coming from the other side of the world, and uh, that's the kind of turf courses they run on. They all have given him. There's an interesting, there's no question, Master of the Seas is the horse to beat without a question. But in this race, there's also an interesting price horse, number six, Cheryl Spite. This horse actually has two starts at Keelan with a win in his second. And she's listed at 15 to 1 on the morning line. And if you look at her turf races on it, you know, good going and where there's some give in the ground, all of those races are very good. Uh, at 15 to 1, you know, maybe play an exact to 4 6 and uh, turn a 2 to 5 shot into a 10 to 1 shot. Yeah, there's no question about that. Uh, you know, the way the conditions come up today and the, um, the big, de- big defection of De Jure. The really, the main uh, the main target will be Masters uh, of the Seas, and uh, as you say, this horse. A lot of people think that maybe this horse, the conditions are right for him uh, to run good enough to maybe even upset Masters of the Seas. You don't know, right? Yeah, good uh, good play there. And that, again, fifteen to one, Louis Saez, man. If you can get the Louis Saez at fifteen to one and couple of right, up today. yeah, boy, that'll be nice. That's for sure. Uh, uh, you, who do you think will be uh, the, the horse that's going to set the pace in that race? That's the whole question. I, I think the one's going to go from the rail, uh, but he's like 31, so uh, I don't know how much of a chance he really has. Uh, listen, um, Cheryl Spike may show speed. The bottom horse may, may show some speed. Whenever you think no one's showing speed, five horses go to the lead. You know that, Ralph. Yeah, so. they, there's no question about that. And you know you got uh, jockeys or thinkers out there. You got Jose Ortiz and his brother Irad in the race. You got Tyler yeah. Gaffleone, uh, Flavian Pratt, Luis Saez, as you said, and uh, Frankie DeTore. So you got a lineup of uh, very uh, you know jockeys that know what they're doing out there, and they'll adjust to that track real quick, especially – uh, if some of them are riding in the limestone in that short race on the turf, kind of try to figure it out, that's for sure. But uh, it'll be uh, nice to see the Maker's Mark mile. It is a grade one on a Friday for 600000 yep. at Keeneland, that's for sure. And, of course, uh, tomorrow will be the other three big stakes races that include uh, the Lexington at Keeneland tomorrow. And uh, as far as uh, – by the way, I saw an interview with uh, Brad Cox about Encino. And, yeah. and believe it or not, he thought if the horse ran and Sino ran a big race uh, tomorrow that he he may uh, squeeze himself into the uh, Kentucky Derby field. He may, but uh, remember, I think he's trying dirt for the first time, so yeah. it's a new game. You know, Cox knows what he's doing. If he's putting him on the dirt, obviously he's trained on it and he knows that he can handle it. But that being said, he still has to run on it, and let's see what happens. Yeah, he on the interview he did say, he said, the horse is training very well on the uh, dirt, and, and this was a perfect opportunity for them to give the horse a chance on the dirt because, as he, say, he says, if the horse runs well on the dirt or as just as good as he does on the turf, it opens up a new, a new uh, wide scope of things that they could do with this horse later on. So that's a consideration there as far as that's concerned. But it was kind of... A, it was kind of uh, unusual for Brad Cox to say uh, that if the horse uh, wins the race, that he, he might go in and turn him around and put him in the derby. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's not get too, the way, the let's not get too far ahead of ourselves on that one, right? Exactly. By the way, the, the edge in that race is that two of the short price horses, Hades and Liberal Arts, 7-2 uh, and two and 4-1 to one on the morning line. They're yeah. coming back relatively short. They ran just two weeks ago. Yes, they did. And yeah. I guess they're, they're running here trying to get paid, certainly trying to get points to get in. Um, you know, to, uh, a quick turnaround, uh, stretching out and shipping. I don't know. I, I think that becomes a good betting race because uh, I think both of those short price horses are vulnerable. So. All right, Should be a great before we get to the picks, and uh, we're going to get off the schneid today with the picks, um, your thoughts about Roughnecks? Well, he had uh, close to $30 million in purses. He's been training for 22 years. It was a surprise, and it was a quick, you know, usually you say, I'm, I'm retiring at the end of the year. Right, I'm retiring. Yeah. Boom, you come up five days later, I'm retiring. Maybe he's just had enough, you know. People are uh, a little disgusted with Heisa and everything else that goes with it. Obviously, uh, if you're a trainer, you don't want to hire a diabetic because they're all getting caught for this metformin. It's some sort of di- uh, medicine, medication for diabetic people. They got Jonathan Wong, and now they got George Weaver yesterday, and I think they got another trainer or two on the same violation. So 
Obviously, there's some sort of contamination or something going on, and Heiser just has to do a better job than they're doing. Yeah, I mean, the contamination thing is getting to be a big problem as far as, uh, because these 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 uh, amounts of uh, the, the banned it's drugs, it's, it's so just it's my, so minute that I can't see even it uh, an affecting a horse. But I understand that they say, you know, if we, we find a minute amount in the test that we do, how do we know there wasn't more in and got out of the system before we took the test? So I understand that. But still, all in all, they got to give a little leeway to contamination with these horses. They just have to. That's for sure. I mean, did they even prove that that such a medication helps improve a horse run? I don't even know what it would do to, to get a horse to run better, I've, but I'm not well, we, I'm we, just a scientist. We, or, or a we know one thing. I've never heard of a diabetic horse. So, so, <laughs> Too many sugar foods. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave it at that. All right, give me some picks, my man. All right, let's go to uh, Aqueduct first and look at the sixth race today at seven furlongs on the main track. By the way, it rained all night, finally stopped raining this morning, so the track certainly has a lot of moisture in it. And I like the number seven horse in here, True Empress. This is a five-year-old mare from the Carlos Martin barn. Louis Rivera aboard to ride. <clears throat> She's listed at four to one on the morning line. She's run well on an off track in the past. I like her draw. She's drawn outside going seven furlongs. She should get a great trip in here. Number seven, True Empress, wins today's sixth race out at Aqueduct. All right. The sixth race at Aqueduct, number seven, True Empress. The seven and the sixth race at the Big A is uh, Jonathan's first pick. Where are we going with another one? Let's go to Gulfstream. Look at race number four, a mile on the turf, and uh, one of the few tracks that are off fast today in nice weather. I like the number four horse in here, Bringer of Rain. Uh, this is a five-year-old gelding who was claimed two starts back by trainer Jose D'Angelo. Most of this horse's running has been on Tapita. However, has some good races on the grass, switches back to the turf today. Amicio Jaramillo aboard to ride. Eight to one on the morning line. Number four, bringer of rain, upsets and wins today's fourth race out at Gulfstream Park. Well, we do know one thing. We know that the four horse, bringer of rain, we want to bring us the money, but we don't want them to bring the rain. So no, in the uh, fourth race, number four, easy to remember, four in the fourth race at Gulfstream Park. Uh, Jonathan, I believe you have three sheets today. We have Keelan, we have Oakland, we have Gulfstream, and we have Aqueduct. Oh, you got four sheets. Four. four sheets today. Yes. All, right. All right, my man. Good stuff. And, of course, we will uh, we will tap you on the shoulder tomorrow with those uh, races at Keeneland and, and the Apple Blossom at uh, at Oaklawn Park as well. Again, uh, Baffert's horse is running, is entered at, at uh, in the Apple Blossom. Correct. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, uh, Jonathan. All right, Ralph, stay safe and be well. Thank you. All right, you got him a man. And, of course, you saw his uh, website there. You can get his uh, stuff on that. We'll be back with uh, Rich Ang. He's up next. And then, of course, uh, John and Jerry yet to go. So don't go away. Who is there for heroes or the families left behind when a service member or first responder dies or is catastrophically injured in the line of duty? Who helps our country's homeless veterans? And who helps our nation to never forget 9-11? Let me tell you who. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation. The Foundation's Gold Star, Fallen First Responder, Smart Home, and Homeless Veteran programs comprise their In the Line of Duty programs. They're all dedicated to honoring our nation's heroes and their families. The Foundation's Never Forget programs engage people in 9-11 remembrance across America. Over 80 runs, walks, and climbs a year. Dozens of golf outings. And the Tunnel to Towers 9-11 Institute is educating kids in kindergarten through 12th grade to help our nation keep its vow to never forget. More than 95 cents of every dollar you donate to Tunnel to Towers goes to its programs. Never forget the sacrifices of our country's greatest heroes. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. That's T, the number two, T.org. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered.
Okay, back on Race Day Las Vegas. We just got the late scratches, folks, and both horses that Jonathan Hardoon gave us are scratched. So uh, we're reaching out to him and see if he can give us uh, replacements for that. Uh, in the fourth race, uh, the four bringer of rain uh, didn't get the rain, so he scratched. In the fourth race, scratch number four, bringer of rain, and at Aqueduct, his horse in the sixth race, number seven, True Empress, is also scratched. So we'll wait and see if we can get a couple more horses that uh, will at least run today for uh, Jonathan. Now we're going to go to Rich Ang standing by. Richie, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ralph. Uh, I got to ask you a favor. Do you think my two golfers from the Masters can be scratched so I can get my money back? Wow. I got to tell you, it's just there is something, uh, you know, if people are not uh, people who watch golf and, and golf is, uh, you know, is a sport that you really have to know and love to watch because it uh, it's rather slow if you don't understand the game. But watching uh, the Masters on TV, uh, you know, every year, it is so beautiful, it's so gorgeous, it's so well-maintained, et cetera, that you kind of just enjoy watching the golfers golf no matter what they're doing, and, and uh, some of the golfers are really having a great round. Oh, yeah, uh, Bryson DeChambeau uh, leads with uh, a minus seven, and uh, the huge favorite, uh, about four to one, is Scotty Scheffler. He's at minus six, Ralph, so uh, he's playing. He, he's probably the best golfer in the world right now. He's he's kind of in the position where Tiger Woods was like, you know, 10, 12, 15 years yeah. ago. But the conditions were pretty good because, you know, 27 players uh, were able to, to beat par, minus one or, or better, and that's about a third of the field. So the conditions were not too bad for the guys out there. No, considering all that weather that went through there, um, and uh, it looks like uh, they got clear sailing for the rest of the uh, tournament that ends on Sunday, and that uh, precious and uh, elusive uh, green jacket, that's for sure. But, uh, hey, Richie, you've done well with your future book bets. You can't win them all. We understand that. And so uh, uh, we're not – trying too many crocodile tears for you on the masters. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know, the thing about future book bets is they're yeah. not for everybody no. because you're going to lose easily 90%, if not 95% of the future book bets you make. But that's why shopping for price and getting the best odds is so important. And, you know, the two guys I tried, the Matsuyama and uh, uh, Spieth, were both uh, in the 20s, so I thought they were fair value, but they both got off to a stumbling start, and they're probably too far behind to catch up. Now, uh, wasn't Spieth uh, uh, nursing a, a sore shoulder? Didn't he have a sore shoulder? Yeah, that's po it's possible. I mean, you know, golfers have injuries just like, you know, any other uh, type of athlete. Yeah. You know, a, a problem a lot of guys have is a bad back because of the torque their body is from uh, the swing, mm -hmm. but... Uh, that's that's possible, but you know they shot seventy six and seventy nine respectively, and that ain't going to get it done. Well, uh, Richie, you know that philosophy you have about uh, future book wagering uh, goes right through uh, daily betting on horses uh, day after day. Although uh, you know sports is a very popular uh, wagering on sports is very popular. The thing is with horse racing is that with the value you can find in horse racing each and every day. You don't have to win a lot of events to actually make and win money. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times on our show where you guys will give us maybe uh, six picks, and uh, what will happen is maybe two of the picks will win on the day, and you still made money because when, yep. you, when you get the win there, it, it's a, a value play, and you get it. So that's a, that's a little bit different than sports. Sports, especially, you know, during the football season, they say you have to be anywhere from right, right around a 60% winner. Uh, to even break even with the juice, that's not the case in horse racing. You could go goose egg all day long and hit the last race superfect and be out for the day, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, say, for example, one of the most popular bets is the pick five. Mm -hmm. You know, if you play 20 pick fives and you hit two of them, if they pay enough, you probably show a nice profit for uh, your, your, uh, your work. No kidding. All right, Richie. Well, now we'll get uh, down to some horse racing. I know you're doing a Keeneland sheet. You always uh, like to do that, me, because it's a fun meet to do, and especially with Santa Anita not running. It's uh, one hell of a card today at Keeneland, as well as it will be uh, for the uh, the rest of uh, its season. So what are we doing at Keeneland today? Let's go to race number eight, Ralph. It's an elongated sprint, seven furlongs, uh, allowance condition. And uh, I like the number three horse, Classic Legacy, 9-2 to two in the morning line, Junior Alvarado riding for Bill Mott. Two angles here. One is that there's a real positive pace scenario for him to close into. 
And secondly, uh, this horse has won race in the slop at Aqueduct, broke his maiden on a sloppy track. So uh, similar to that horse yesterday you're talking about, uh, I, I feel pretty confident this horse will like the off going. Let's go with the three, Classic Legacy, Race 8, Keeneland. Eighth race, number three, Classic Legacy. That is the race between the two stakes races. Do you have a thought about the seventh race, Limestone, or the uh, ninth race, Makers Mark Miles? Well, you know, I, I do have picks, uh, you know, on my uh, sheet. Mm -hmm. I happen to have my sheet over on the other side. But uh, Well, I, I, could, I, the, could, I can give you uh, your top pick in the seventh race, the Limestone, <laughs> was Pipsy. Yeah, I went for Pipsy being, uh, you know, William Walden is the son of Elliot Walden mm -hmm. and uh, from Windstar. And uh, this is an import who's uh, won the last two starts, got Flavion Pratt. So that's always a positive angle. And uh, I thought the, the price at six to one, if you can get that, I thought that'd be a square price for, uh, you know, uh, coming coming in uh, to the U.S. for the first time. Uh, and as far as the uh, the other race was the ninth race, the Maker's Mark. Uh, Charlie Appleby's got an uncoupled entry route. So while Master of the Seas is probably going to be like, you know, four to five or three to five, sure. I would not throw out the other Appleby, the three, Naval Power. How many times have we seen that where the other part of the uncoupled entry wins? Yeah, yeah, the old hidden entry. And he's got Tyler Gaffleone aboard that knows how to ride that track. This kid's doing very well there. So we'll keep that maybe in mind for a little bit exacto or trifecta box with the Master of the Seas, Naval Power, and, of course, uh, the other horse that uh, – both uh, myself and Jonathan like Cheryl's, uh, Cheryl's spite. If we can get those three to mix it up, and, and uh, even if Master of the Seas wins, uh, I think it'll be a good uh, play there, trying to make uh, chicken soup out of chicken feathers, so to speak. In, <laughs> in any case, uh, for uh, Richie's, all his selections for all the races today at Keeneland, go to the racedaylasvegas.com website. Hey, thanks a lot, Rich. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Hey, thanks, Ralph. Good luck, everybody. All right. Now, folks, uh, before we get to John Lindo, uh, I did get Jonathan Ardoon. He did text me uh, alternate picks. Obviously, the two horses he gave out on the show are scratched. Now, we don't have uh, graphics on this, so listen up very carefully. We're going to stay at Keeneland. At Keeneland, we're going to go to the first race. Remember, it's a 10 a.m. post time uh, in, in the Pacific time zone, 10 a.m. first post time at, at uh, Keeneland. In that first race, he likes number two, Figueredi. Number two, Figuretti. Let me check and make sure that horse isn't scratched. We'll get to uh, we'll get here in the uh, second race. We're all clear in the second race. Figuretti is running. So in the uh, I'm sorry, in the first race, we're clear. The horse is running. Number two, Figuretti, is uh, Jonathan Ardoon's play at uh, Keeneland. That's a Keeneland race course. Uh, number two, Figuretti, and that's in the first race at Keeneland. And then uh, oh, my phone turned off here. Here we go. All right, and then I go to Aqueduct. At Aqueduct, he goes to the third race now. And in the third race at Aqueduct, he likes uh, number, number two, conniving. Number two, conniving at Aqueduct in the, uh, in the third race. And uh, that is clear as well. So in the third race, he likes the uh, two, conniving uh, at Aqueduct. And those are his uh, plays that uh, obviously... Uh, were scratched as in, in original plays were scratched. So you've got the uh, Keeneland race one, number two, Aqueduct race three, number two as well. And we'll be back with John Lindo and Jerry Jackowitz right after this. From the South Point studio, there, the perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. Comedy. See the over under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. For real. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> when I look at the clock, I go, ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines, live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service, bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. The race.
Tuesday Las Vegas show, the only exclusive daily local media racing information source in Las Vegas. All right, we're going to roll real quick on this final segment because of those late scratches getting Jonathan's other horses in. So we go right now to John Lindo standing by. John, congratulations on that late pick four on the sheet yesterday at Keeneland. Thanks, Ralph. Uh, it's nice when you do the extra work to, to make selections for dirt and turf on those other races to put them in play. So we'll take it. It was a good payoff. And it was only a $12 ticket when you get all the scratches out of the way, $362.26. And again, we remind you, the Lindo Report is available only in one place here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It is here at the South Point uh, Racebook. It's here again today for Keeneland. Uh, selections in all the races, a suggested late pick four again, and all the goody information. We'll cut right to the chase. Uh, John, if you have a thought about the limestone or maker's mark, we'll get it and then a pick from you. Well, the turf is listed as yielding. going to be uh, very difficult to know how it's going to play because we haven't seen it all week. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, just in the ninth race, uh, you know, Master of the Seas was so good winning the Breeders' Cup Mile last year. But there's a, he's got a stable mate in here. How about the other Charlie Appleby is a long shot, number yeah. three, Naval Power, who may end up being the controlling speed of the race. All right. We will uh, take your thought about that as well as uh, Rich Ang said the same thing. Pick. Let's go to race number six, uh, number nine on command. I thought needed the, the race off the layoff at Gulfstream Park last time. Trainer George Rusty Arnold likes two point horses to Keeneland. A good stocking trip in store here at a fair price of four to one. Number number nine on command, race number six, Keeneland. All right, you got it, John. Uh, John, thanks a lot. Uh, I'm sorry to rush you on, but we got to get these uh, picks on for the listeners out there. Sixth race, the nine on command in Keeneland. And uh, your sheet is available here at the South Point, free of charge, exclusively here. Thanks a lot, John. We'll talk to you tomorrow. You got it. Good luck. All right. Now we're going to go to Jerry Jackwitz, who's always, uh, he's always, you just give Jerry a couple of minutes and he can get it all done. Right, Jerry? You bet, Ralph. All right. So uh, we'll go right to your selections. All right. We'll go to the first race today, Ralph. We've got number one, Citizen Mac. Oh, I better click over here. Okay. Um. For uh, Bonnie Lucas, I haven't really played with Inwa Beto. This is my first bet on Beto. Uh, I really like the horse an awful lot, and I think the jockey knows how to ride. And um, all we need is uh, the rest of the field to run slow because this is a bunch of slow horses. But I like the one over the two, three, six. I'll do some reverses, but the one, Citizen Mac in race number one, that's my featured play. 10:20, first post time Pacific time here uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, first race at Aqueduct. You like the one over two, three, and six and reverse. Uh, the track is uh, labeled muddy, starting out muddy, and uh, right. the power pages are, are for that. That is correct. They are they are correct for uh, muddy. Okay. Uh, in, this, in the second race, I'll give you a second feature play. Yeah. Um, number two, Light Line from Brad Cox's barn. Um, again, I think a, a, a horse that handles the mud well, really good trainer. And everything about this horse I really like in particular. I like his last race where he was eight wide uh, going around the turn. So I'm going to throw that race out. I think he's going to run good today. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you that as a, as, a, as I'll let you figure out what to do for yourself. I will tell you this. Yes. In the second race, I have a V horse. It's certainly not light line. And in the third race, because you brought out uh, Jonathan's play, which I think is very nice. I have two P horses, potential to improve on the wet track. Might and it, be interesting to hook up. Okay, uh, so, but his Gotta horses... His, yeah, absolutely. His is not one of them, though. Right, his it, is not. His selection in the third race, the three, is not one of them, but you got two Ps in that race. The Ps mean they have potential to run uh, better than their current form uh, on and off track, which uh, the third race still will be. So... In the and we have well, I got to pick three. Then I got the uh, the pick three in the first race, one with two with three, and uh, your two P horses, and we'll let everybody yeah, and we'll let everybody get the power pages that are available right now at your website, JerryJ'sPowerPage.com, for today at Aqueduct to get those P horses. How about that? <laughs> you want? How about it? All right. Uh, we only have one more thing to say on this crazy Friday show, and uh, you are going to say it. Have a great race day, everybody.